The HIB initiative was formed in 2005 to address the issues delaying introduction of HIB vaccine in developing countries. We saw the risk in many countries where the decision was we don't have HIB disease in our country and hence we don't need to use a vaccine because it's not cost effective. For many years this vaccine couldn't be accessible so it was good to think about a way to facilitate uh, decision-making processes at global and country level for the children to access those vaccines. Supported by a $32 million four-year grant from the Gavi Alliance, the initiative was a consortium between the World Health Organization, London School, John Hopkins and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The consortium worked to ensure that regional officers and partners were providing consistent messages and functioning as a team. You know, I think it's just important to have lots of perspectives represented. The HIB initiative focused on three strategic areas. What happened often with local surveillance data is they significantly underestimated the disease burden. It took a lot of effort to actually uh, highlight the data that is currently available and to package it in a comprehensive manner to make it easily interpretable to decision makers. You're doing research for a purpose, and, and, and if you can't take those messages out there and communicate them to the, those who you can use them, there's no point in that research. Communication and advocacy was really um, one of the major pillars of our strategic approach. I want to do this advocacy because I want to get this vaccine in this country, not after two decades. We want these vaccines to this country, to the children who cannot pay for it at real time. How you simplify your message, how you focus your message, how you target your message to the right audience. I. As a program officer, I was convinced all the criteria that are set by the guideline for the introduction of this vaccine, I think we've met them. 